If you have uploaded images into Design Space before, you might have noticed the pattern fill option here on the right. It's not very clear what this is for and how to use it. In the comments on a recent video, Ann Aubrey expressed interest in uploading patterns and asked if I had a video showing how to upload and use them. Since there have been a lot of updates to Cricut Design Space, I wanted to make sure that the pattern upload process hasn't changed. So I decided to make this up-to-date video showing what patterns are in Design Space, some ideas of what to do with them, and show the step-by-step -step process on how to upload and use them. If you're new here, this is Hank's Maker Mentor. I'm here to help you learn how to make. When you're trying to upload something, how do you know whether you wanna upload it as an image or upload it as a pattern? We're gonna fill in this chart to show the differences and similarities between them. Images can be added to the canvas independently. Patterns must be applied to text and image layers that are already on the canvas. If you're uploading a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, or a BMP file, it can be uploaded as an image or a pattern. If you're uploading an SVG or a DXF file, those must be uploaded as images. While it depends on the design, images can be made without a separate printer like an inkjet printer or a laser printer. Patterns will always need to be done using print and cut, which is why patterns can only be done on the Explore family of machines, the Maker or the Maker 3. You'll notice another difference between the two when you're trying to find a specific one. Images can be searched for based off of the name and the tags that were assigned. Patterns can be filtered by color and can only be uploaded and used on Design Space for Desktop. Images can be uploaded and accessed from Design Space for Desktop, iOS, and Android. From this chart, it's hard to see why you would choose to upload something as a pattern. Believe me, patterns can be really useful. Keep watching this video and I'm going to show you how. First, let's start by uploading a pattern. I'm using this Tropical Flamingo Seamless Pattern Kit from Creative Fabrica. I've linked it along with the other resources and products in the description below. Seamless papers are great examples of files that work well to upload as patterns. I've already downloaded and unzipped the file. So on the canvas, I'm going to click on Upload here on the left. And then I'm going to click on the Upload Pattern button. You can drag and drop the file or click Browse. It reminds you that it needs to be a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, or BMP. For this first example, I'm just going to drag and drop. It brings me to this screen. It is automatically set to save as a print and cut pattern. If you selected the wrong image, you can click Replace Image. On the right, you can rename your pattern if you want. At this time, it doesn't matter since you can't search by the name. I do make sure I select the color or colors of the image. This is how we can filter them when we're trying to find one. It adds a small check mark on the colors you select. Once it's ready, click Upload. If all goes well, Design Space will bring you back to the Upload screen with a banner that says Pattern Upload Successful. Let's upload another one, but this time we'll browse for the file. Click on Upload Pattern, then Browse. This will look a little different on a Mac, but you'll navigate to the correct folder, then find the one you want, select it, and click Open. It brings me to this page again. For this one, I'm selecting pink, white, and multicolored, and then Upload. Now that those patterns are uploaded, I'm going to use them on a keychain from 143vinyl.com. They include SVGs of the keychains to help you size everything, which will be perfect for using these patterns. I've already uploaded the Flamingo design, so in Images, I'm going to search Flamingo, use the filter Ownership, and select Uploaded. I click on the one I want, then select Add to Canvas here at the bottom. Now let's use the patterns. I'm going to move it over and zoom in on my canvas so I can see it better. Select the design or the text that you want to use the pattern on. Across the top is the Operations drop-down menu. Open it and select Print and Cut Standard. Then select the color icon here. It'll bring up this print type box. Open up this drop-down and change it from color to pattern. Directly below the drop-down, you'll see the patterns. I have no idea how they're sorted, so most of the time, the first thing I do is click on the word filter here at the bottom. It opens up this section that says colors. Select the colors you want to filter for. 
Once you find the pattern you want to use, click on it. Now you're able to select Edit Pattern. This is where patterns really shine. This is what makes it that that chart that we did earlier doesn't mean as much. You have a ton of creative control here, allowing you to reduce or enlarge the scale. You can adjust it horizontally and vertically, rotate it and flip it. You can see a preview as you work, allowing you to make adjustments you want without needing to slice, undo, slice again, when you're trying to make an image a shape without using the pattern feature. The preview you see is frequently a lower resolution than your final project, but it will print at the high resolution. This just allows it to process faster. With this side all set, I duplicate my Flamingo, flip it, and work on a pattern for the other side. Selecting patterns is similar to selecting fonts in that you can spend way longer than you intended trying to find the perfect one. On the topic of fonts, the process for applying a pattern to text is the same as applying it to an image. Once you have your text typed out, you choose your font, select print then cut standard, the color icon, you use the drop down to get the pattern, and then select your pattern. I was able to adjust my formatting, add a shape as my background, flatten it all, and then resize it. This design is done. I hope this video helped you understand patterns. If you want to learn more, check out this video right here. If you have any other questions that I haven't answered, please leave them in the comments below. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more Cricut tutorials, projects, Cricut news, and design space updates. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.